I'm Caitlin, one of the youth librarians at Skokie Public Library, and joining me today is... Desi! Today, we are excited to talk about one of my favorite games, a game that has been enjoyed by children throughout history and never seems to lose its charm. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. What? Everybody knows about the handheld gaming systems from times of old. Okay, what were you thinking? Well, you kind of took the wind out of my sails, but I'm talking about the time-honored tradition of hide-and-seek. Oh, I like hide-and-seek. Everyone does, including, and this may surprise you, animals. Wait, what? Okay, let me backtrack a little. Remember when you and me and Haven were stomping through the woods and you and Haven were running around and hiding from each other and then, as if from out of nowhere, we saw the deer? Yes, only it wasn't from out of nowhere. They had been there the whole time. They just blended in perfectly with the trees and fallen leaves. Exactly. And that got me thinking about all of the insects and animals who are around us all the time that we both see and don't see. To be fair, most of the time, the animals aren't playing a game. Okay, smart guy. Then why are they hiding? I'm glad you asked. It's actually pretty genius. You know about food chains and food webs? A network of food starting from organisms like dirt or grass and ending with apex predators? Yes. So a worm eats dirt, then a bird eats the worm, then a cat eats that bird, then a wolf eats that cat. Everybody's full! Sure! But you can see why the animals at the beginning of the food chain might not feel super safe. Yeah, I guess I'd rather not be eaten. So some animals have developed this ingenious defense strategy where they hide in plain sight. Otherwise known as camouflage. Did you know there are four basic ways that animals hide? There's concealing coloration. That's where animals' coats match their surroundings, like our deer. Their coats are brown, so they blend right into the forest scenery. Yep, and then there's disruptive coloration. This would be a pattern on the animal that disguises them, like a zebra or a turtle. Very cool. And then there's mimesis. Where an animal or insect looks like it's something terrifying and dangerous in order to trick and intimidate predators like an owl moth. And finally, there's disguise. This is similar to mimesis, only... In this case, the animal or insect is pretending to be something that it isn't, like a stick or a leaf. Nature is so cool. Okay, we have covered the basic ways in which organisms... An organism is a form of life like an animal or a plant or an insect. Yes, so we have covered the way that those organisms might hide in plain sight for protection. But while we were talking, I thought about another reason why animals might want to hide. Are you talking about predators? I am. So we know that there are many, many prey animals that use camouflage to disguise themselves so they don't become lunch. But there are also some sneaky lunch seekers who have figured out that camouflage might help them in their pursuit of food. Like polar bears. Concealing coloration. Or tigers. Disruptive coloration. There are so many examples of both predators and prey using camouflage in nature, and we encourage you to investigate further. Think about all the different ways that nature has adapted to protect itself. Well, that'll make sense to me, but you know what I always say. Observe the mighty Lego. Outside its protective toy bin, it must mask its painful properties in order to survive the living room wilds. Very funny. Seriously, they blend right in with the carpet. Mom. And they really hurt when you step on them. Okay, okay, I'll clean up my Lego. And also, the best way to learn a new concept is through a catchy song. Yeah. If you sing a catchy song. You'll never get it wrong. peek a they can't see you. Creatures
brings us to our project. Today, we are going to camouflage some butterflies. For this project, you will need a piece of paper, some crayons or markers, and some scissors. Fold your paper in half, then draw a long, skinny rectangle along the crease. Once you've done that, you are going to draw a big number three, connecting the ends to your rectangle. Then cut it out, unfold it, and you've got a butterfly. Explore outside or look around your house for something with a cool background. Think about what kind of camouflage you want to use. Does your butterfly pretend to be something that it's not? Does it blend into its surroundings? Be creative. Thanks for investigating with us today, junior biologists. We will see you next time. Until then, ready or not, here 